coming up on today's show. Auto industry experts in tier one parts supply industry say that most automakers are readying themselves to switch to 800 volt EV architectures by 2025. Rivian CEO RJ Scarringe sounds the warning bell over EV battery shortages and GM kills the Chevrolet Spark EV, sort of by confirming it's no longer going to stock replacement battery packs, just five years after the last ones rolled off the production line. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to TN or Transport Evolved News. Thanks for tuning in. Before we get going, a quick reminder to make sure that you've hit the subscribe button, dinged the bell and set your alert preferences for this channel. Today's show is sponsored by the Electric Vehicle Association. Join up today to support the electrification of transport and get the help you need to finance your own EV or clean energy future. And if you are in the US, don't forget to put Fully Charged Live USA in your calendars. It's taking place in San Diego on September 10th and 11th this fall. So head to fullycharged.live forward slash US to find out more. And we hope to see you there. The majority of electric vehicles being produced today make use of 400 volt architectures, meaning their battery packs sit at around a nominal voltage of 400 volts. But in recent years, cars like the Porsche Taycan, Hyundai Ioniq 5, Audi e-tron GT and EV6 from Kia have launched with 800 volt architectures and platforms like GM's Ultium are also based on that same voltage. I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of 800 volt architectures here, but 800 volt cars can charge far more quickly at DC quick charging stations than 400 volt cars, assuming that is the station can operate at 800 volts. This week, tier one parts suppliers confirm that the majority of the auto industry will switch to 800 volt architectures by 2025. We've got an entire tech explainer on the way from Kate into 800 volt batteries, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. The very same week we were test driving the Mercedes-Benz EQS 584 Matic here at the channel, the car's bigger sibling, the EQS SUV, was launched online. Revealed during a special online event, the EQS SUV is built on the same platform as the EQS sedan, but sits significantly higher than the EQS in order to offer the kind of load carrying and interior space you would expect in an SUV. There's a choice of five or seven seat layout, a rear or all wheel drive, and for all wheel drive variants, a choice of two different powertrain outputs, 265 kilowatts or 400 kilowatts. Charging is very similar to the EQS with a maximum 200 kilowatt CCS plug and charge compatibility is standard. Range is estimated to sit somewhere around the 373 mile, 600 kilometer mark based on Benz's internal estimates, and it will enter into production later this year at the company's new US production facility. As usual, pricing will come in the near future, so watch this space. This week, Tesla released its quarterly financials as well as held its earnings call for Q1, and Elon Musk was in attendance. I'm not going to rehash everything that took place because we've already covered it in our Tesla News Roundup show from earlier in the week. I'll link to it below, but it's worth touching base on some comments Musk made during the earnings call about Tesla's yet unnamed robo-taxi vehicle, a vehicle which Tesla is designing with no traditional controls. Musk had announced the vehicle during Tesla's cyber rodeo event earlier this month, but during the earnings call doubled down on the vehicle, stating that, quote, it is fundamentally optimized to achieve the lowest fully considered cost per mile or kilometer when counting everything, end quote. Musk went on to say that he believes it will cost less than a subsidized bus ticket. We are very eager to see the maths on that one. As Rivian ramps up production of its R1T electric pickup and R1S electric SUV, we're starting to see more and more examples on the road. And I know several of you guys have reached out to us to let us know that you've either already got yours or you're about to. But this week, company founder and CEO RJ Scarringe warned the automotive industry is barreling headfirst into a brand new shortage that could make the current microprocessor chip shortage look small. What is it? You've guessed it, EV battery cells. Talking to the Wall Street Journal, RJ said that the world's lithium ion cell production currently represents less than 10% of what the industry will need in 10 years time. Looking forward, he warned the order of magnitude larger battery crisis could last for two entire decades. 
Elon Musk recently tweeted about the prices of lithium, joking this week during the Tesla earnings call that going into the mining business for EV batteries is akin to printing money. If the challenges aren't solved, it could really hamper our transition to EVs. BMW has officially revealed the 2023 BMW 7 Series, with the all-electric i7 xDrive 60 treated at the reveal as the most important 7 Series variant. The electric version of the executive full-size sedan retains the oh-so-massive kidney grille of recent BMWs, even though it doesn't actually need one, with a high-mounted narrow matrix headlight with optional crystal headlights available as an upgrade to create, quote, a light effect unmatched by any other car, end quote. The interior will be familiar to anyone who's spent any amount of time with the iX and has all of the features you'd expect of a high-end car, including automatic doors. 400 kilowatt all-wheel drive is standard with a claimed 590 plus kilometers, 366 miles on the WLTP range cycle. The i7 will be the only 7 Series on sale in Europe, but it is hard to take BMW seriously about going electric when it plans to sell ICE variants of the 7 Series in other markets namely North America and China. Not to be outdone with all the other reveals happening this week, Audi pulled the covers off its Urban Sphere concept, the latest in a series of concepts to have the Sphere moniker. Audi is portraying the car as something of a lounge on wheels with an ultra plush interior and plenty of space to relax. Seats swivel, as they do in pretty much every other autonomous concept we've seen in the last decade. But what's new is a privacy screen designed to let you shun your fellow occupants when you just want some peace and quiet. It's pretty clear nothing like this will ever enter into production, especially with no B-pillar and rear coach doors, but I've got to say the fact that this looks like an oversized wagon reminds me of how we need more electric wagons in the EV marketplace, or estates for those in the UK. Fancy, unachievable concept cars might be fun, but making something other than SUVs would really be great. Tesla's superchargers are unquestionably the most reliable and easily recognized high power charging station solution for electric cars in the world, but until recently they were unusable for owners of non-Tesla EVs. Luckily that's changing with Tesla allowing non-Tesla EVs to use superchargers in Europe and North America, starting the process of planning non-Tesla specific superchargers that other cars can use. This week we learned that a Texan grant program that was offering 21 million US dollars to help expand and the Lone Star State's EV charging provision rejected an application by Tesla to fund four brand agnostic Tesla superchargers. It also rejected bids by ChargePoint and EVgo. But because of this all, we have learned that Tesla's application has shown that it's now installing high power superchargers at one fifth of the cost that other charging providers are using to install their charging infrastructure. It's not clear why Tesla didn't get the money, but it shows it really leads everyone else on cost. The first they ignore you, then they laugh at you quote, so often misattributed to Gandhi, is nevertheless an astute observation of how the auto industry has responded to EVs. And according to quotes made by BMW sales chief Pieter Nota this week, BMW is now at the fighting stage after ignoring and then laughing at Tesla for some time. Talking to Automotive World this week, the executive said that the company believes quote, Tesla had a unique selling point for some time, that it's over, end quote. Bolstered by full order books and a long wait list, and with a combined sales that appear to be bouncing back, BMW thinks it has Tesla in its sights. But as Inside EVs noted in its coverage of those fighting words, BMW trailed Tesla's vehicle registrations in the US in the first two months of this year by just over 17,000 vehicles. And that includes BMW's internal combustion engine models, as well as its plugins. It is great to see more competition to Tesla, and personally, I think competition will ensure Tesla and others stay on their toes. But let's ditch the grand talk, eh? Sales first, then promises and proclamations. A few weeks ago, Lexus teased the RZ450e all-electric model ahead of the vehicle's official reveal. And as I opined a few weeks ago, press photos showed it with a steering yoke. But this week, when the car had its official debut, the yoke was mysteriously missing, replaced instead 
but the traditional wheel. Apparently though, it is coming. According to the automaker, the RZ450e, which is based on the very same platform as the Toyota BZ4X and Subaru Solterra, will eventually be offered with a completely steer-by-wire system, which means no mechanical connection between wheels and steering. When that happens, a 150 degree lock-to-lock -lock control will be possible, which in turn will make a steering yoke not only possible, but practical. I am no yoke fan, but that's a far better implementation than the one Tesla currently has. It is no secret that Elon Musk hates the SEC, especially since he's now infamous going private at 420 funding secured tweets got him in hot water with said regulator. This week, just in time for 420 day, we learned via Reuters that a federal judge ruled on April 1st that Musk's original tweets about said private deal were, quote, false and misleading, end quote, adding that it, quote, held that he recklessly made the statements with knowledge as to their falsity, end quote. That's according to investors currently suing Tesla over the whole debacle. They had tried to get a federal judge to block Musk from making tweets about the ongoing case, noting that if Musk continues to tweet about the SEC and 420 tweets, it could prejudice potential jurors. Musk claimed this week that he did indeed have the funding, but states that the SEC coerced him into settling out of court. This one is going to get very messy indeed. Coming next, short shorts. But first, this is the bit where I remind you that TE is here because of the kind donations of people like you. Sure, we do have white label content and we do make third party production work for people and YouTube is our good source of income. But the lion's share of our income and thus everyone's salary comes from those of you who support us through Patreon, YouTube channel memberships, Ko-fi and our swag store. We're always welcoming of new supporters, so follow the links in the show notes to join on up. And also know if you're not able to support us financially, just watching our shows, sharing them and engaging in the comments section all really helps. With that, onto the short shorts. Volvo Cars has announced a major strategic investment in Israeli firm Stordot. Together, the two firms hope to accelerate the development of next generation cell technology that can add 100 miles, 160 kilometers of range in just five minutes. LG Magna E Powertrain, a collaboration between LG Electronics and Magna International, has broken ground on a new facility in Mexico, where the two companies will work together to produce power electronics, including motors, inverters and chargers for EVs. Stellantis's Fiat says it wants to become the people's Tesla by bringing a range of affordable, exciting new electric vehicles to market. The brand is going all electric and its assault on the market will begin with a brand new Fiat Punto sized EV, along with three other electric models. The Swedish electric motorcycle company Cake has always pushed the sustainability of its products and its manufacturing process, and it's just launched a new certified pre-owned bike program called Re Cake. Certified bikes will come with their own warranties. Hot Wheels has just launched a new series of die-cast models it's called in the Best of Green Speed. It includes the Lucid Air sedan, Nissan Leaf Nismo, Audi e-tron GT, Hummer EV and Ford Mustang Mark E1400. They are already on sale at your local toy store, so go get them. A new Oklahoma bill offering upwards of $700 million in incentives and rebates tied to EV manufacturing is rumored to be tied to a brand new manufacturing facility that some sources claim is being considered by Panasonic and Tesla. Both companies have yet to confirm the rumors. Speaking at the New York Auto Show last week, Three different Kia executives confirmed to Motor Authority that the full-size Kia EV9 is expected to go on sale in the latter half of next year in North America. It'll be priced from 50,000 US dollars before incentives. Lightyear has announced a brand new partnership with mobility specialist MyWheels to deliver 5,000 Lightyear 2 vehicles to the car share service. The vehicles will be available on the MyWheels fleet in 2025 if all goes according to plan. Cattle has launched its first official battery swap station in China. The facility, located in Xiaomen in the eastern part of China, is operating under the brand name EVGo. Cattle's spin-off business is dedicated to battery swapping services and more stations are promised soon. 
Ford has officially sold out of all allocations of its Mustang Mark E for 2022. Having previously closed the order books for standard range models, Ford closed the order books for Mustang Mark E, GT, and GT Performance this week. It may only have been operating a month or so, but Tesla's Giga Berlin is already producing upwards of 350 Model Ys per week. According to Tesla's shareholder deck, it's looking to ramp up to 1,000 cars per week by the start of May. Video has been leaked online of Ducati's FIM Motor E race bikes undergoing testing. While Ducati originally published the video, it was then later pulled down and then resurfaced on other sites. The sound made by these races is pure adrenaline and I cannot wait to see more. Germany's Federal Ministry of Economic Affairs and Climate Action has proposed that subsidies for EV purchases be gradually phased out over the next three years. It also wants the government to end all PHEV incentives by the end of this year. The auto industry disagrees. Elon Musk may famously not own a home, but Tesla's recent performance as laid out in its quarterly earnings report has triggered the penultimate of 12 payouts for Elon Musk in the form of a $23 billion compensation package. It needs board approval before officially becoming enacted. Cattle has announced a new facility in Indonesia where it aims to refine raw battery materials, produce battery cells and recycle used battery cells. The facility, backed by the Indonesian government, represents a US$6 billion US dollar investment by cattle in the country. A wealthy Tesla owner just had their car go viral on Reddit after they used the summon feature to call their car at a private airfield. The problem? Their Tesla promptly drove straight into a Cirrus Vision jet a private jet worth an estimated three and a half million dollars. GAC Aeon has opened its first battery swap station in China, specifically for use by its Aeon LX electric car. It joins battery swap markets dominated by NIO and, like cattle, wants a piece of that action. It says it will open 220 swap stations in China this year. Xpeng has opened the order books for its P5 in select European countries where it's due to begin deliveries later this year. Priced from as little as €48,000, the P5 significantly undercuts the Tesla Model 3, and we're going to be interested to see how Tesla responds. The investment specialist ARK Invest is known for its predictions regarding the future of Tesla stock, but this week it made a truly incredible prediction that Tesla stock could rise to $4,600 per share by 2026 provided FSD is out of beta. President Biden's administration originally set a goal of approving 25 gigawatts of solar, onshore and geothermal energy projects on public land by 2025. But in a report published this week, the US Department of the Interior says it's approved nearly 32 gigawatts of projects already. Tesla looks to be readying a new feature that will allow free access to public Wi-Fi hotspots operated by AT&T, Comcast, Orange and others. It's an alternative to using in-car 4G access, although I should note using public hotspots will work best when the car's not moving. Genesis has opened the order books for its upcoming 2023 GV60 electric crossover. It's built on the eGMP platform and is expected to go on sale for between $55,000 and $75,000. Genesis warns, though, availability will be very low and only in specific launch markets. The US Department of Energy has released a memorandum of understanding to work with several big utilities to work on projects designed to roll out bidirectional charging solutions to help stabilize the electrical grid across the US. But initial projects will take place in California. In addition to the two electric vehicles Honda plans to build in collaboration with GM, the company has confirmed it's going to be working on three new electric vehicle platforms that will be developed in-house. Honda hopes to debut the first of those platforms in 2026. Parts specialist Marl has announced what it says is the world's lightest e-bike system. Called the Marl X20 Smart Bike, it weighs 3.2 kilograms and is on sale today. And the company says it adjusts to its rider's style using artificial intelligence. When Volkswagen announced the ID Buzz electric minivan, it promised a long wheelbase version of the same would go on sale in North America by 2024. Now spy shots are surfacing, showing said long wheelbase variant in testing. And it looks pretty good. Elon Musk's tunnel company, The Boring Company, has announced it successfully closed its Series C funding round with a total of $675 million in the bank. The company is now valued at $5.7 billion. 
Ford's luxury arm Lincoln has revealed its Lincoln Star Concept EV, a super futuristic car complete with the usual impractical concept car interiors. It previews what the brand says will be a new direction for the company. Lincoln aims to have four electric models on sale by 2026. Truck leasing specialist Penske has just finished buying 750 Ford e-Transit cargo vans to add to its fleet. The vans will be delivered over the next few weeks and expand the firm's electric fleet, which now includes electric big rigs and cargo vans. German mobility startup Trinity has unveiled its latest two-wheeled city scooter. Called the Trinity Uranus RS, its vintage design and 60-mile, 100-kilometer range per charge is great for European cities. Just don't say to someone, hey, can I ride Uranus? And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Cake is unlike most electric motorcycle companies out there. That is undeniable. While some companies have gone for high ticket, high powered models, Cake has split its lineup into two, focusing on one side with lightweight off-road bikes and on the other with easy to ride utility bikes. And this week it's just added three new models to its lineup. Unlike past models though, which were marketed at everyone from bikers to car drivers, these ones have a very specific target audience. Children. Called Ready, Steady and Go respectively, the three machines are designed to start cake customers off young with a balanced bike, single speed mountain bike and kid size electric off-roader respectively. Honestly, they all look great fun and the Mini Trails bike looks perfect for those who would otherwise be running around on tiny two strokes. So, good job. And finally, how long should an automaker keep parts on hand for a vehicle after it ends production? Some people will tell you it's eight years, others 10. But the reality is that the law in most countries is a bit nebulous when it comes to parts for no longer in production vehicles. In the US, where there's no de facto law, it's generally expected that automakers keep car parts for as long as it would take for all warranty periods on said vehicle to run out which in the case of the Chevrolet Spark EV would mean eight years after the last Spark EVs rolled off the production line. Yet this week, EV Resource claimed that it has confirmation from GM insiders that the company has run out of replacement battery packs for the Chevrolet Spark EV, the company's precursor to the Chevrolet Bolt EV, and plans not to get any more. Given that the car had two different battery suppliers during its production, that complicates matters. But what's more pressing is the fact that some Spark EVs are still under warranty, making us wonder what would happen if an in-warranty Spark EV had a battery issue that needed addressing. We're going to be digging further into this one, for sure. And on that terrible note, we are done for the day. But before I go, a huge thank you to the Electric Vehicle Association for sponsoring today's show. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. The EVA can help find someone near to you that can help you make your own switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. And if you become a member, you'll gain access to a brand new clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EVA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. You can find out more as usual by following the link to electricauto.org. I would love it, of course, if you would hit subscribe and the bell for this channel and our second channel, Transport Evolve Take Two. And if you're not already a channel member or a Patreon supporter, please consider becoming one. You can send us a tip through Ko-fi or you could even buy something from our cool swag store. And if you liked what you saw today in the show, why not consider adding a super thanks to your comment? It is super easy to do. And when you do, it does all come back to us and helps pay our bills and helps the channel to grow. I'll be back soon with more awesome content, as will Kate and the rest of the team. But until then, enjoy your weekend and as always, keep evolving!